Hey guys, welcome to this week's She Speaks Live for a solo episode with me. I just started to do these as this is something that the Lord has put on my heart for a while. And I feel like there's no time but the present to chat about the gospel and encourage us in the days ahead. So I'm bringing us through a contentment series from the journal Serenity, which you can purchase on my website, jamieelizabeth.com. And for 15% off with free shipping, you can use code VIP15, but by any means, it's not a necessity to have one to listen to the solo episodes. So I'll basically be taking us through a personalized uh, scripture verse in the contentment series, and then we'll chat about it much like a mini Bible study. And I've got to say, I've had so many women share about the struggles of lacking contentment as well as myself in seasons. And really to me, being content is not waiting for everything to be so before we start living like it's so. In other words, to help us understand being content It's that we don't wait for conditions to be pleasing, to be content or peaceful. Why? Because peace, joy, and contentiveness all comes from the Lord, not our circumstances. And Paul says in uh, Philippians 4.11, I'll be reading from the Joyce Meyer Battlefield of the Mind Amplified Version. Philippians 4.11, this is so good. Paul says, not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, satisfied to the very point where I am not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my circumstances. I mean, of all places to write about content, the apostle Paul was in prison when he wrote this. Paul was not disturbed in a disturbing place. Why? Because he was drawing out from what was in him, not what was around him. And this is the key for us to draw on the power of God's word and live in the fullness of the nine fruits of the spirit, which is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God's word and the fruit of the spirit is the divine force that feeds us our faith and gives us victory to overcome that discontentment. It's basically not waiting for everything to be ought before you start living like it ought to be. So wherever we give attention to the most is what will gain movement in our lives. So if we pay attention to God's word and feast on it, we'll be looking at our circumstances way differently and be walking daily in this confident hope that our God will care for our needs. Uh, If you turn with me, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, it says in the Amplified Version, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Strong faith, you guys, has disciplined attention. We can't give our attention to God's word if we're giving all our attention to the wrong words. Paying attention to incline our ear to hear his word and recognize a wrong thought is being skilled with our faith. It's girding our minds while it's being guided by the Holy Spirit, not our flesh. Which brings us to the scripture verse we will be personalizing today. This verse I'll be reading uh, out of Romans 12, 2 in the NIV version. And it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So now let's go and um, personalize this verse with me. So when I say Jamie, you say your name. So here we go. 
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of Jamie's mind. Then Jamie will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. How awesome to feed on this verse with placing our name inside the verse as it brings us urgency to focus on God's values, on his word, by proving to ourselves his plan and purpose for our lives. So let's dive into what renewing our mind even means. It's actually just getting rid of our stinky thinking and thinking God's way. It's taking God's thoughts above our own. And how do we do that? By feasting on God's word and not just reading it and letting it go in and go out, but living it out, taking action to what the word of God says. We've got to remember though that this renewing of the mind is a daily discipline. Our mind so easily wants to just take off, but one of the many inheritances that God gave us was a sound mind, a self-controlled mind. But this only works for us if we choose to do it, if we choose to think right thoughts, which will lead us to the right believing, to then the right speaking, to then the right actions. It's in our control to decide what kind of life we want to live. When we decide to not be okay with anything less of God's best, that's when we start living this consistent life of peace and joy. Circumstances can come, but we can still live in God's flow of peace and joy because he never withdraws that from us. Okay, turn with me if you're following Psalm 23, 5. It says, you, God, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Let the enemy watch you feast on God's living word. The enemy can only see our actions and how we respond to a thought. If we have doubts and fear and say, I'm not good at this, or I don't know how uh, we are going to make this month's bill, the enemy sees that as a weakness. And then he can keep pushing his way to get us even more anxious and stressed and pushing our buttons. The enemy's tactics are to constantly be, th constantly be throwing us off of God's territory so he will get us in his territory by responding to things that oppose God's word so he can then easily just trip us up. Look at sports teams. They are looking constantly at strategies to win the opponent by seeing where that opposite team's weaknesses are. They don't go in full of fear, but they have a game plan. That's what we are doing. Notice a verse that says God has prepared a table in the presence of the enemy. We are not to be afraid that the enemy is present. There's a spiritual battle going on every day. And that's why we need to feast on God's word. We, when we do that, we are in God's territory and it completely expels the enemy's tactics. So let the enemy watch you eat and speak God's word. That's victory and that's faith. So speaking God, thank you that you are my provider. You will provide what I need for my bills. Or God, you have already equipped me and will give me all the resources I need to do what I need in excellence. God's got the ultimate power. He's the victor. And we live in his victory as a child of his. Turn with me, 2 Timothy 1.7. In the Amplified Version, it says, God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. He has given us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind, a personal discipline that results in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Notice that fear is a spirit. It's the wrong spirit. It's a spirit that comes from the enemy. God gives us a spirit of power, love, a self-controlled mind. When our minds are disciplined, we have peace. An undisciplined mind disrupts our peace. When we uh, discipline our mind, it's a renewed mind. An unrenewed mind is an undisciplined mind, and it's open to receiving thoughts that 
are not from God. And if it's not righteous, we don't want to go down that path because everything we know follows from our thoughts. When the verse says, do not conform to this world, it's because the world has the ability to conform people, even people who don't even contend to conform can be conformed. I know the way I used to live, I didn't realize how much I was conforming to the world. Sometimes we don't even know it and we're conforming to the world. You know, I wasn't renewing my mind with the word of God, which uh, is, you know, taking God's thoughts and choosing that to transform my life. When we are transformed by God's word, our lives won't look like it used to. Our life should not stay the same when we are believers. We should be constantly growing and living out that set apartedness from the world, acting and thinking differently. Uh, Back in the day when I was a little girl, there were these toys called Transformers. And the Transformer would turn from a car to a giant uh, robot looking thing with a weapon. It was able to do things it can do as a car. This illustration is living a transformed life. We believers are doing things we couldn't do before knowing Christ. Renewing the mind gives us access to the transformed life. And that renewing of the mind is a lifelong process. It's daily going to the word and feeding our minds with his truth. If we don't get disciplined in our minds, then we won't look much different than the others of the world. We got saved because we were done living the way we were living. And we know that being saved doesn't mean we won't run into problems, but it does mean the outcome of our problems will be different. The renewed mind sees problems differently than the unrenewed mind. If our thoughts uh, oppose God's word, we need to lay it down and reject it before it starts to go into the process of our thought life, because uh, then that affects our belief and then our speech and our actions. We will know basically that we are living in the renewal of the mind life when we show it in the actions of our daily lives. It takes more than just quoting the word. We, we need to have the word of God dictating the way we live. The renewed mind isn't renewed until it shows through our actions. We confess and speak out God's word to align ourselves with what we just confess by showing it in our lives. If we say I'm beautifully and wonderfully made and we don't live in the we are his masterpiece and in, in what we do, then our minds have not taken root with the renewal way of thinking. It's not in the talk, but in the walk. It's showing up daily with the fruit that comes from the renewed mind. This is the transformed life. This is growing up spiritually that will never end until we get to heaven. We can't keep growing spiritually mature until we learn to put into practice the renewing of the mind, a mind that chooses to be self-controlled by the word of God. So let's keep going and place God's thoughts over everything else by living out his faithful word in our lives. Hey there, thank you for listening to this to the end. Stay tuned for more teachings as we go through the contentment series straight from my journal, Serenity, Calm Your Soul and Strengthen Your Spirit. And if you'd like to own your own copy, go to jamieelizabeth.com or you can hit the link below in the show notes. And since this is a new release, I'd love to bless you with a checkout discount of 15% off plus free shipping. Use code VIP15 in the promo code section as you check out. And also I do have a fun quiz going on 
It's on my website where you can find out what kind of journal writer you are. So go ahead, explore on my website. Again, that's jamieelizabeth.com, J-A-Y-M-E, elizabeth.com. And don't forget, this episode is live in video on YouTube and Spotify. So hit the subscribe button and never miss newly released She Speaks Life episodes. Okay, have a blessed day. We'll chat soon.